don't worry, Don said at last without the slightest hint of doubt in his voice. I'll take care of it. In some ways, Sylvia found Don's sudden confidence refreshing, but on the other hand, her confidence was nowhere near as great. She wasn't sure what he was trying to say exactly, but even after having beaten Grant, she was convinced that there were some things that he just couldn't do. Take care of what? Sylvia asked. Don, those two have been fighting for years. You can't just clap your hands and make them stop. Huh? Don asked, suddenly looking a bit disoriented. No, that's not what I mean. Maybe those two will stop fighting and maybe they won't, but I'm not going to let them destroy Aaron the way they're destroying themselves. I have to say something important to the people of your town. Well, they have been waiting to hear from you, Sylvia admitted, discarding all attempts to downplay Don's accomplishment by that point. I'll bet if you said you wanted to explain what happened to them, over half the town would turn up inside of an hour. To Don, that was good news, because it meant that he could get the matter resolved quickly. Of course, if things didn't go well, or if Antoine or Harold insisted on being stubborn, then what Don was about to do might cost him what little chance he had left of learning their fighting techniques, but he'd already arrived at an important decision. He could learn to be a knight, or learn how to fight in some other way if he had to, but he was going to do his best to save Arryn. Almost as soon as he'd gotten out of bed, Don had started spreading a rumor that he wanted to speak to everyone in two hours at the fountain in the middle of town. He hadn't prepared any kind of speech, however, and he didn't intend to explain very much about how he'd won the battle against Grant. Don decided for the moment that he was just going to tell the people of Arryn the truth, a truth that they deserved to know. By the time the two hours had passed, it looked as if the entire population of Arryn had turned out to listen to what Don was about to say. Some of them were chatting a bit at first, but the chatter quickly died down as Don climbed up on the edge of the fountain. He wasn't tall enough to be seen by everyone there, but it would, he decided, have to do. The important thing wasn't being seen, but being heard. As Don looked out at the crowd of people gathered there, he recognized many of their faces. Many had been students in Antoine's compound, and a large number of them had been soldiers watching the battle with Grant. Most of those soldiers had never gotten the chance to fight with Grant, though it was unlikely that any of them really felt bad about that. Many of the people gathered there hadn't been soldiers, however, though Don still recognized them from his brief walks around town, and near the front of the crowd were a group of about ten prominent citizens, among whom Don recognized Sylvia, Harold, and Antoine. There was also a woman there with Harold, who was most likely his wife. Antoine and Harold looked somewhat eager to hear what Don had to say, but the only person there who was really smiling was an older-looking man standing off to one side. Don wasn't sure who that man was or why he was smiling, but it didn't really matter. He just had to say his piece. I wanted to call you all here to explain what happened when I was fighting Grant, Don shouted quickly, hoping that he could be heard by everyone. I really fought him, and I won, sort of. I guess I must have got close enough to winning for Grant, because he called me a warrior a bunch of times, and even admitted to losing near the end, just before he died. There's been a little confusion over who gets the credit for teaching me the technique I used to beat Grant, though, so I wanted to clear that up. Don had done his best to raise his voice while making that statement, and the crowd seemed to be cooperating with him as best they could by keeping silent, but he was almost sure that some people there were just too far away to hear him and would have to be told what he'd said later on. It was a little sad, but Don continued speaking, not deterred by the fact that his words would go unheard by people who were just too far away. Antoine says that I trained under him. That's true, but it wasn't for more than a few hours, and I didn't use any of the skills he taught me when I was fighting with Grant. There is one guy who deserves most of the credit for teaching me the skills I used when I fought Grant, Don continued, however. He lives in the town of Troma. His name is Joel Grodi, and he's an orchard keeper. He spent his life growing and harvesting fruit, and he taught me how to climb trees. If you want to learn the techniques that I used the other day, go talk to him. I'm sure he could use the help, and he knows an awful lot about tree climbing. I want to give him most of the credit for what happened a couple days ago, because frankly, Antoine and Harold were no help at all. Immediately, Harold and Antoine clenched their teeth and looked about ready to bite, and even Sylvia and Harold's wife looked shocked and disappointed by what Don was saying. Most of the people there, in fact, looked at least a little surprised, if not upset or angry, with the exception of the old man who Don had noticed before. He didn't look surprised or upset. In fact, he looked pleased. While he was fighting them, Grant said that Antoine and Harold had the power to win if only they weren't being foolish, Don explained quickly. I hate to say it, but I'm sure he was right about that. Harold had a Jared technique that gave him the power to lift Grant right off the ground, but didn't give him the means to hurt him, while Antoine had a technique that could have beaten Grant if he'd been able to get him to sit still. If the two of them had used their techniques together, if they'd worked together against him, they could have won much more easily than I did, but the fight I saw out there was pathetic. Grant's strength wasn't the reason they lost. It was their refusal to cooperate with each other that really cost them the victory. No matter how powerful you are, if you go into battle with a motivation other than winning for the sake of protecting the people you care about, your chances of losing shoot straight up. You all know Dictate 7 of the true way. It's not there to make people feel good. You know we can't afford to deal with dissent. There's too much danger and too many enemies and monsters like that Grant around. I think if those two want to keep fighting, the rest of you should find new teachers and have them banished until they can work this out, 
Don't let them teach you how to weaken yourselves. Well, I guess that's it, Don said at last after pausing for a few seconds. I'm done. I, I came here to learn how to fight, but it looks like I won't get the chance. On the contrary, the mysterious old man exclaimed, stepping forward and facing Don with a broad smile on his face. If you want the ability to defend yourself and protect others, I'll be more than happy to teach it to you. I stopped taking students a long time ago, but I can see that my help is needed again. I'd be honored to instruct you in the disciplines of combat. At first, Don wasn't sure what the old man was talking about, and even started to wonder if he might be some kind of local eccentric. But then he started to put two and two together, and in a flash, Don's mouth fell open in utter amazement. Hey, you must be Walter. Walter's smile just broadened. He didn't answer, though, because he didn't have time to. He was already being interrupted. Wait a minute, Harold exclaimed, looking distressed and even a little lost as he stepped forward. Sir, you left the school to me. Didn't you say that I already learned everything you could teach me and was ready to start teaching others? Yes, I did, and I don't regret it, Walter replied, still smiling knowingly. But there was one thing that I could never have taught you, but which you needed to learn, and that's discernment. A good man needs to know the difference between right and wrong so that he can recognize when someone has done something wrong and must be corrected. Ever since that day when you took over my school years ago, you lacked that discernment, and you refused to listen to me when I told you that Antoine's chosen technique wasn't evil, but that I never used it myself because I was better at my own technique. If Antoine had been trying to kill innocent people or defaming our sacred customs, then you would have been right to try to stop him, and I would have assisted you. But a fighting technique isn't a sacred custom. The disciplines of combat exist to protect people, and some are more useful than others, but as long as a discipline is useful, it should be respected and used to protect the innocent. Your persecution of his technique was wrong. As for you, Walter said, turning to face Antoine, his smile fading as he spoke, which somehow didn't make him seem any less confident. You were always too proud of your own way and your own techniques, and you always took offense much too quickly. If you'd asked me to help you with designing a place for you to teach, I would have but only if you'd remained humble through the whole thing. Instead, you had to go and prove how great you were, even if it meant endangering the very life of the man who'd once been your best friend. Of course, the worst thing you two did was going out onto a battlefield fully intending to get each other killed, Walter continued after pausing for a moment, but at that point Harold objected. I was never trying to get him killed. No? Walter asked, suddenly looking surprised as his eyes fixed themselves firmly on Harold's. In that case, why didn't you try to save his life in that battle? You can't tell me it was just because you wanted to respect his wishes. You two used to be closer than brothers, and two days ago, either one of you could have left that battlefield and not shed a single genuine tear over the death of the other. You don't even care about each other anymore, and that's certainly not the kind of teaching our people need. Obviously, Walter continued quickly, someone else will need to teach our people to defend themselves. I may be old and out of practice, and maybe I can't fight very well anymore. But I honor the dictates of righteousness, and if I have to, I'll teach what really needs to be taught. With those words, Walter headed back towards his house, and after only a moment, Don followed him. He didn't have anything more to say, but he was hoping that what had been said that day would have its impact. In the meantime, though, he wasn't about to pass up an opportunity to learn.